Welcome to the 2019 ASOP SQL course. I'm just gonna go through some brief admin stuff just to introduce to the course. All right, I think I wanna sack the mic as well. So, if you go to the lovely ASOC UNSW website, you should be able to find in uh, downloads, SQL course, there's a 2019 folder with a 2019 course outline, which we definitely did not just upload recently. <laughs> Is it downloads? Yeah. Oh, good job, marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh shit. So the course outline is pretty simple. We've got our weekly lessons. The only assessment is one assignment. So, if you do the assignment and get a mark, you will get a printed certificate. Hooray! Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, <clears throat> so you don't actually have to come to these classes if you don't want to, because we're gonna upload and uh, yeah, we're gonna record and upload these videos. And there's also videos from the previous years. So I actually did this course in 20, 2017, just using the videos there. Um, the content that's gonna be covered is very similar um, to that year. So yeah, feel free to watch those videos as well. And pretty much our week, starting in week six, I'm just, Going to do a quick intro into what SQL is, general select queries, and then yeah, as we move on, we'll go do some more advanced stuff. But I think SQL is a pretty simple language to get used to, and its functionality is not really that great, to be honest. <laughs> but <coughs> it's useful, and you, you kind of have to know it. So this probably won't really get you a job, but once, you, once you're at a job, you won't be like, drowning in the first like couple days you'll know like they'll be like oh do you understand what this does and you're like yeah from that time in the sequel course i know what this does <laughs> so pretty much this is just get, getting you familiar to it but you can actually do some pretty cool stuff with sequel as well so you don't need to download anything to do this course all you really need to do is go to this website it's sequel.asoc.com unsw.edu.au and hopefully the website's not crashed out. Oh, amazing. <clears throat> so, can I get everyone... Oh, so everyone's also using the same username and password, by the way. So, it's asoc unsw underscore student. <coughs> Wait, let me just wait. We got... And then the password is asoc is the best... Wait, ah, oh, crap. ASOC is the best 2019. So it's, once again, ASOC UNSW underscore student. ASOC is the best 2019. Okay, <clears throat> so hopefully everyone's logged in now. <clears throat> One thing you might notice is that you have a change password button, so please do not press this. <laughs> All right. I think me and Nigel are gonna have a look into the settings of the server. All right, change your password. So yeah, try not to press that. And I think if you try to do things like, you try to like drop a, like drop a table, like delete a table, hopefully it doesn't let you do that. But <laughs> Yeah, just, it should be alright. Like, it's pretty, uh, pretty idiot proof. <laughs> what did you just say about students? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does anyone know what SQL does or what it's for? No. No, alright. So I think someone asked a question before what SQL stands for, and Nigel answered it's structured query language. So essentially, you're just querying databases. So kind of like, Rather than have like an Excel spreadsheet with like you know a thousand columns and a thousand rows and all that garbage, and then like using Control F or like doing any other filters to find stuff, you're kind of going more personally into the backend database to find entries that you're interested in. 
All right. So essentially what we have here on this website is the, I think we call this the main database. So, so this one's called ASOC UNSW underscore sandbox. I've got this other one class. Hopefully they, it should be exactly the same. And then the idea is that within this, there's all these different tables. So this one's called categories, customers, employees, and so on. And you'll generally find that in each of these tables, there is, you know, a ID. It's pretty good practice to have that. Some other, you know, important things in this table, and so on, right? So, one kind of user-friendly aspect of this platform of SQL, right, being from a web browser, is you can literally just type in what you want to query right here. So, I would recommend trying to tick this like retain query box so it stays there, and then essentially. Okay, so click into categories. Everyone in categories? Categories, and then if you do browse, yeah, if you do browse. So browse is kind of just like, you know, you just open up the table. So it already like opens up for you here, right? Um, and then that's just because the website thinks that, oh, if you click on categories, you kind of want to see the table, right? But notice here at the top, it also types this in for you. Select star from categories. Right? And essentially what this just means <clears throat> is that you're selecting everything. That's what star is. So star is select everything from the table called categories. So, for example, if I was just in the main sandbox here and I didn't want to click into the categories, right? I just like, I'm just like, I'm too good. I don't want to click in it. I want to type it out, right? I just, I just go select star from categories. And then I'll, I'm going to take retain query box. It's still there. Press go. And then it does the exact same thing, <clears throat> right? So the idea here is that this website kind of helps you out in a bit where if you don't know the syntax, if you click on customers, for example, it assumes you're selecting everything from customers. So you pretty much, like it kind of writes the code for you. You just by clicking it, it kind of writes a bit of the code for you. Hello. Um, yeah. Notice how there's a bit of differences in the way I kind of wrote it. So I didn't bother with these like single quotation marks. Um, I don't think that's really necessary. I kind of haven't seen that used in practice. Generally, I'll just, I'll say some things like good practice would be to like do something like, and then on a separate line from like what table you're searching from. <clears throat> nice, thank you, thank you. And then. If I just do it from categories, <clears throat> notice I actually have two databases here. I have ASOC UNSW underscore sandbox and ASOC UNSW underscore SQL class. If I have two tables named the same, I think it's also good practice to specify which database you're drawing the table from. So you can do something like, instead of from categories straight away, you can do, for example, ASOC UNSW underscore, underscore sandbox dot so the first part is kind of selecting in the database dot categories. Thank you, thank you. Cheers. All right. And you, yeah, you get the exact same result, right? Um, so I think that's just useful. It kind of makes your code like it's a little bit less readable, but you're being a bit more specific in what you're searching out for. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so I think some other notes about this in general is that you'll know that in code, it's kind of nice to be able to comment throughout it. So I think for your MATLAB or your R that you guys might have done already, um, commenting throughout the code to make it more readable. So someone else, and when you, when you yourself come back in a bit, like in a bit, right, you know what the hell's going on. It's kind of important. So in SQL to comment, the syntax is double hyphen and so you can be like this here is a comment 
Now, in this version of SQL, right, there's quite a lot of versions of SQL. You actually have to have a double dash and a space. So I actually just learned this yesterday, to be honest. You need a double dash and a space to consider it as a comment. The one that I use at work, it's like he's using a different Microsoft platform, right, different um, program, right, not through the website. You can actually just use a double dash straight away. So double dash with a space is what is considered a comment. Okay. Now, what if you wanted to do something like multi-line comments? You would do a forward slash asterisk, and then to close it off, you do another asterisk followed by a forward slash. Is that a forward slash or backslash? Who knows? <laughs> but you kind of just make it nice, and like you close it off like that. Right, so commenting throughout your code is pretty important. Otherwise, when someone else comes and looks at it, they'll be like, what the hell is going on? And they won't be too happy. Um, yeah. So definitely use comments throughout to kind of help you learn as well. Some other things that are pretty good practice would be to, you know, indent. So if you just like open up the custom, like one of the tables, right? It just puts everything on one line. So the way SQL works is you could actually just like put everything on one line and it would run fine. But as you can imagine, you don't want like a line that just like stretches on and on and on because it's going to be really unreadable. So yeah, just kind of use some common sense into like how to make it look good, right? Okay, so I, I think that's just some general things. Now, if I look into a different table, let's just say orders, for example, I get this whole other table here, right? It just like shows me what's in this table. And then let's say I want to be a bit more specific in what I want to look at. So the next part is, uh, just go here. So instead of selecting star, right, selecting everything, let's say I wanted to just select the order ID and the order date, right? Let's say I'm like doing analysis on this and I want to like, you know, grab some data from this table and I want to export it to Excel or something. And I don't really care about customer ID, employee ID, ship ID. I just want to, to, I want to know the order date of these orders, right? Maybe I'm, I want to find the distribution of order dates. Something like that, right? Make a histogram. So instead of selecting star, which is selecting all from orders, right? What else, what should I be selecting? If I just want to do order ID and order date, what can I type here to hopefully just give me order ID and Order date. What do you think, Coco? <laughs> if I wanted to get order ID, what I type? <laughs> so in this table, I got all these different columns. Uh -huh. But let's say I just want a table, a column with order ID and order date. What do I type? If I uh, let's just say I only want order ID, what do I type here? What am I selecting? Yeah. Do I type in first column? No. No. Column one. No. All right. So you type in what you want, right? You just type in order ID. So I'm just selecting order ID from orders. And then, wow, look at that. I just got my order ID. So pretty much this is all really SQL is. You're just like selecting different things that you want and putting in the code. Right, you can also, if I want to put in order date next to it, right, you could do comma order date, yep, now I've got order ID by order date, cool, and then there's just some other things with like this syntax here that you might notice that I've got select. I can go straight into typing order ID, but then it's separate, separated by a comma. Um, so like, uh, I can separate it by a comma, but then on my last one, I don't actually need to separate it by a comma if I go into from, from I don't have a pen. So that's just some syntax here. You can also, if you wanted to, just chuck in the star as well. And essentially you're just 
adding in these columns in this order. So I'm, my first column is going to be order ID, order date, and then just everything else in the table again. So I press go here. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. All right. <laughs> so when SQL fails, it's really confusing as to why it doesn't work. So it's like, it's saying my syntax near this star is not good. And I'm like, all right then. Instead of, all right, you can probably just Google and figure out what's going on. But if I put a star at the front, hopefully that works. Okay, so that works. It doesn't like it when it's at the end, but it's okay at the start. Do I have a reason for that? Um, not at this stage, but I think depending on the different SQL programs that you're running, having the star at the end, star at the start, it shouldn't really matter, I believe. So some different like servers have different rules. This different versions of SQL have different rules and so on. But as you can see here, I've selected everything from the table, which is order ID to shipper ID. And then I've added in again, order ID and order date at the very end, right? So it's just like, I've just got two duplicate, duplicate columns here, right? So essentially this is all, once again, what SQL is, you're just selecting different things from what you want. Okay. This is kind of not very useful yet, right? We don't really want to just like put columns together all the time. We kind of want to search for things. So a very common thing that you might want to do is, for example, if you have a big table of employees, let's say, um, all right, here there's only 10, right? So it's pretty easy to just like eyeball it and look at it. But let's say you're interested in, you know, what if you want to be a good boss and you want to <clears throat> you know, check when someone's birthday is. I guess you should know, but let's say if you didn't know and you wanted to check when someone's birthday is, right? Instead of just selecting everything, right? Like I said, and the eyeballing and finding the employee's name, you could be like, select everything from employees, but I'm only interested in where the employee's name is equal to, um, let's say, Andrew. All right, we're interested in Andrew's birthday is. Cool, right? So you just select everything from the table and then this should essentially leave you with just one row. <laughs> and employees. Okay, so that's really stupid. I typed in employees, but it's actually, the name of the column is actually first name. So you gotta be careful with the name of the column. First name is equal to Andrew. There we go. And then I'm just left with Andrew so I can like just search him up. All right, his birthday is this one rather than eyeballing throughout the whole thing. Yeah, because two Andrews. Oh, if there's two Andrews, that's a good question. Both would pop up there. Okay. Um, I don't think that's actual. Like that's just like that's just there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's say I'm interested in only the people whose name starts with A, right? So I don't actually want to care about Andrew's birthday. I'm like I'm just interested in people's names that start with A. The different syntax with that is would be from employees where first name is like a percent and then close the quotation mark. That's starting here. So this is, this is, this one here is employees with first name Andrew, employees with first name starting with A. <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure if the case matters, if it's case sensitive. I think that might depend on the database as well. But you can find out, I guess, when you try. Now, if I run this, I don't think it should work because I've got two where clauses. So it's like where the first name is equal to Andrew and then where the first name starts with an A. So it's kind of, you're kind of searching for like two hard criteria at once. So what you can do here, which in this case is gonna be redundant, 
you just type in and for the second where. So it's like where the first name is equal to Andrew and the first name starts with A. But like that is also redundant, right? But that should work. So you can use and if you're if you have a where at the like before your and, then you have to use an and after your where. You can't have like two where's. Right? Um, cool, cool, cool. So the way you kind of generally use SQL, like at least the way I've been using it in the workplace, is that you're essentially you have this script here, right? That you like save as a SQL file. That's like just a text file. And essentially every time you want to search for something, you just have to open the script and you're literally just manually editing it for whatever you need, right? So I'll do say, things like type that where there, and then I don't want Andrew anymore, I want names that start with A. So what I'll do here in this case, I wouldn't delete the whole thing, I'll just comment it out, for example, right? So you're kind of always just like fiddling around and playing around with what you need at the time, and then just running the different queries like that. So now I've got Andrew, Anne, and Adam. And Let's see if it actually works if I don't use an uppercase A here. I have a feeling it might, but I have a feeling it might not as well. All right, cool. So the case doesn't matter there. As long as it starts with a A, it's all good. Right? But yeah. Cool. All right, what else? Does anyone have any questions so far? When do you have a name that starts with A and B? Starts with A and B? <clears throat> so yeah, this asterisk here is just kind of like a wild card. So as long as it starts with A and whatever else after it is like whatever, then it's all good. If I, if I care about A and B, then I just type in AB there. So as long as it starts with AB and then whatever, um, that should come. Now I don't think Wait, this. What if it's like you want all the A's and all the B's? All the A's and all the B's. So everyone that starts with A and everyone that starts with B. So that's a good question. So I think it'd be where first name is like A, so it starts with A, and then you'd use or first name like B. So this is getting everyone that starts with A and B. And there might not be anyone else with B. So let me try to find, see what's in this database. Uh, let's say I want A and e M. M. A and M. Okay. So if I want to, yeah, A and M, I'll do this. And then I get them like that. Right? So there is and, which is used after a where. Pretty much you always have to start with a where, and then you can just use and or or after that. Okay, and or used after a where. And once again, if I only was interested in people with starting with M, for example, in this case, I would like in practice, I'll just go through, comment this one out, change this or to a where, and then run it again. So it's kind of like quite a manual process and it's not very nice, but that's pretty much what SQL is. You're just playing around with the code and changing it as you need it. Rather than deleting code, I recommend that you just comment out the block that you don't need, right? That's kind of the general practice. So this is where if you want to start, with a M or like if you want to start with an A. If you wanted to end in an A or end in an M, you just change wherever the percentage sign is. So in this table, let's say I want everyone that's name starts with ends with a T, right? So I want Janet, Margaret, Robert, so on. What I can do is I'll be go where first name like percentage T, single quotation mark, comment out this line again because I don't want that where because if I have two where's it breaks, press go, 
<coughs> and everyone that ends in a T pops up there. So pretty much that ash, that percentage sign is just yeah a wild card. You can put it wherever you want. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what that uses for. Let's say I'm interested in, in everyone whose name contains an A and an N in that order, A and in that order, similar to what I just did there. So this is first name ends with T. If I'm interested in names which contain A, N, wherever in the first name, right? I should be more specific. First names, I'll do where first name like and does anyone want to have a try of what you reckon, what I'm putting here? So percentage on either side, exactly. So percentage A N percentage, close quotation, <coughs> and everyone which has an A N in it should come up. So yeah, the percentage is just a wild card. Uh, feel free to yeah play around with that as you want. There's other different versions and more specific ones here that. I have in these notes, but I don't think they're that important. So you can do things like selecting things with like different like lengths of characters and so on. But I don't reckon that's too important because I think this is all you really need. What else is there? <clears throat> cool. It's generally for selecting. Now, going a bit off yeah. this now, let me just say, edit this. Going doing a bit of something different. So we're no longer selecting stuff, no longer interested in that. If you wanted to, for example, do things like insert new rows into a table, uh try not to do this. Um like don't actually don't actually press this right. But press delete the table and drop. Uh okay, how do I run this? Um Let me just log in to a different version. Log. Let's see, that's for future. Let me just find the password for this one. <laughs> it's Kelvin. It's Kelvin. It's Kelvin. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it's not, it's not like, I know it has Kelvin in it, but it's like it's not actually Kelvin, right? Like, is it like Kelvin something? <laughs> so it's So if I want to do something like, for example, drop a whole table, like delete a whole table or delete a whole row, the code that you'd do would be different, right? So it'd be like this. Oh, no, I expected the code to come up. <laughs> all right, maybe we'll try this. Uh, all right, drop. No, okay, okay. Drop here. No, oh, all right. <laughs> okay. So essentially, I was just I just want to show you guys the syntax for if you wanted to drop things like drop whole tables, delete whole tables. Um, I'm not too familiar with myself because like in a workplace, you're not really gonna get to that level like straight away of like where you're dropping whole tables, because that's like, you're actually deleting it from this d database, or you're adding new rows, like you don't really want to be messing with those entries in the, like, the back end manually, you're kind of just using SQL to search for things. So, I didn't really learn the code myself, but let me try this again, one more time. Uh, oh. Drop. 
Okay, I think this is literally it. Drop table employees. Okay. Oops. Okay. <laughs> so I do drop table and I drop the table name order details. And if I run this, it just runs it. It runs it pretty good. The order details is still here, but if I just like oh, yeah, order the order details does no longer ex exist. So that's how you delete a table, drop table, the name of the table. Try not to run that. I don't know if it will let you run that, but try it, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, so that's how you drop a table, just FYI. If I want to change... Oh, let's say I change this to like six. If I want to change, for example, row, there's all this thing like alter table. So the syntax is kind of, it's quite readable in SQL. Because it kind of makes sense like you're ordering the table called orders. You're changing the order ID to order ID, the name, the type, integer, the length, six, and you have some other parameters here they can put in. But like, I don't think you'll ever really need to touch this. You won't really be doing this in this course. Because, um, yes, the application is not really there in the workplace right away at least. Okay. What's the time? Okay. There's also things like creating tables. Um, but I'll show you the syntax, but once again, I don't really think it's that worthwhile to know. But essentially, similarly, you just create table, create table. And let's say I'm be like, this is the test. And the syntax is you open the bracket. <coughs> Oops. And then generally you have things like an ID number to index everything, which is pretty good. And then you'd have int primary. And then the idea of this is that every row you have a new, a unique ID. So that even if like some rows are fully duplicated in their names, right? Two people have the same name, two people have the same last names, all that wacko stuff you'll be still be able to distinguish between two rows of data, which I think is very important, right? Each row of data. For example, you'd have something like first, oh, first underscore name. You would have a var char. So that's var variable character, I believe. So it's pretty much just like string. The 255 is the length. <clears throat> I believe that's like, uh, you assigning the table to give that entry 255 bytes of data. So I think 255 is just general practice and that's, you can put a lot of stuff in 255. Now, like you could change that to whatever you wanted really. Um, but yeah, essentially you don't want to have a open-ended length where if someone wanted to like, just like dump in like you know, copy paste something in there like a thousand times, you could get a table that's like, you know, it just breaks the table because it's like too big in terms of the size. So that's kind of like a backup there. So this is essentially a 255 length string. And then let's say there's something like score. All right. And then int integer, I think integer you can put up to eight, but once again, yeah, that's cool. And if I try to run this, hopefully this works. <laughs> nope, okay. I'm gonna do this. No, okay. No, int. Okay, maybe I'll just get rid of this. Eight. No. Oh, okay, so I need to have a comma. So pretty much, if I don't have a comma, it breaks. And then, essentially, what SQL is like not very friendly in this regard, where it just kind of says it broke. Check your syntax. It could, do, yeah. It'd be, it'd be nice if it just said, oh, check if you have a comma there or not. But that's all good. So we just created a table called test. I've run it. It's an empty result, so it's got zero. That's why there's no results down here. Hopefully if I go out of this and 
Ah, oh, cool. So I got a table called test here now. Let's go refresh this if it pops up on the side. Huh, interesting. I've created it in the sandbox. Okay. Hmm, cool. But I got a table now called test. I selected everything from test right by just clicking on it. Nothing comes up, which is expected because it's an empty <coughs> table right now. Um, but yeah. So if I look at the structure of this test, you can see things that we just did, right? There's an ID number, integer, first name. Um, there's all these other parameters which you don't really need to worry about. I think that's important. But yeah, essentially there's nothing in this table yet. And now I'm gonna show you how to put some stuff into this table. So it's kind of not very friendly. Like in Excel, if you wanna add something to a row, you just type it in, right? Type it in the box. Here's a bit more manual. But the syntax should also make sense. So essentially we're inserting into the class, into the table te test, and we're inserting the values of one, let's say that's the ID key, the name, <clears throat> remember that our columns, right? It's the ID number, first name, let's say it's crispy, score thousand all right let's see if i do this cool now if i open up the if i want to have a look into the test i would just so select star from test and i'm just going to comment out this part here And essentially, I've got my entry into the table. If I want to insert two things at once, let's say this is two, crispy two, thousand five hundred. <clears throat> I'll just separate this by a comma, and I go three, crispy three, two thousand or something. Cool, and then. So I'm not selecting anything this time, I'm just inserting, I'm just commenting this out again. Oh. And go. And just to check that's all good. On comment, on comment, comment this out. Yeah. And cool. So essentially that's how you insert into a table. It's kind of a very manual process. So ideally, you're not really doing this too much with SQL, right? You hopefully you'd have something else to help you write a automatic SQL script to, for example, do this for you, or you'd ideally just be using SQL to query things rather than actually inserting or editing the backend database. Yeah. Any questions? All good. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what else do you have. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so if you guys try to create a table that doesn't work, that's because I think has anyone tried? Yeah. Yeah, okay, it doesn't work. You made one? No. In the sandbox? I don't it's not appearing on It's not appearing on here? Okay. Um you might be able to create it and it, if you run it, it will show you in the bottom like the results your your table but yeah if it doesn't let you create it it's because there's been permissions sent on it that you guys can't break the whole thing okay just going back some more did someone do this to employees <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. all right first name did someone delete the first two columns as well <laughs> All right, uh, Nigel, we're gonna have to work on that, eh? So yeah, I think we remember right. There were there were some columns in employees like first name there. <laughs> all right, all right. So try not to press the buttons. Like you, you're, you're curious, I get it, but yeah, just it's all good. Okay.
What else is there? Okay. Let's say I'm interested in, right, we're going back to selecting now. I'm interested in, I've got all these products. I click show all here. How many products? I got 77 products and they all have different prices, right? They have different prices. Um, let's say I'm interested in sorting by price. You could just do, like, you know, take it out to Excel, put a filter in it, sort by lowest to highest, right? But you can also just use SQL as well. Once again, selecting stuff from products and then do something like order by price descending. Okay, so hopefully this should work. Cool, so that's just price highest to lowest. So these are other queries you can do, right? There's order by, there's where and or, there's like. Um, I think there's also not like. There's all these like different queries you can use, but I'll leave that up to you to explore and find out if you're interested. So that's descending. If I want to do ascending, it's S. What's ascending? Ascending, is that it? Yeah, that's ascending. So ascending is ASC, descending is DESC. Cool. But yeah, I think generally, for example, in this interface, I'm able to just like simply click these and then, you know, that sorts it out for you, right? So once again, this website is kind of nice in the sense that you can just click on these and it does the code for you. So here, if I want to do it by ascending, I just order descending, click it. It's selecting from products. It's ordering by products dot price descending. Similar to how if you remember at the start, I did instead of selecting from products, right? I said it was good practice to go specify which specify which database you're drawing from even though I haven't really been doing it because I'm lazy, but essentially it's good practice to do that, right? It's very similar in the regard where if you wanted to specify which column you're descending by, right? If you have multiple tables joined together, it'd be nice to order by, you know, to specify, sorry, which table you're ordering by. So if there's two columns called price, I'm only ordering by the one which is from the table products. So this is like database, table, table, column. So the dot kind of just like, you know, goes in to a deeper level. Alrighty. So I think we'll finish that off for today. That's it. Um, next week, we're going to go start joining tables and actually seeing how SQL can be a bit more useful than just searching for different things. Thank you everyone for coming. And more information about the assignment will be released soon. It's a pretty easy assignment, like shouldn't take more than like a couple hours. <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty chill. So you yeah. should stick around and do it. Um, so also in addition, there is a workshop for the case comp, the Taylor Fry case comp um, later today at 1.30 in Law 303 if you are interested in um, seeing what it's like to take part in an actuarial focused case competition. Yeah. So, <laughs> essentially, I don't think I'm going to be uploading any like notes from this because if you go to the downloads, the SQL courses in the previous years have really good notes. So, um, I don't think 20, 2018, but 2017, I really like 2017. The tables they used in 2017 are a bit different. Um, but like these files here, just open them in Notepad if you can't open the SQL file. Essentially, they have pretty much, it just has examples of the syntax. They have different table names, so they have like tables called cakes um, and other things, but the syntax is all the same. So you need to see examples going to there. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you.